Volvo have done something extremely interesting and a first for the industry. So this car, all right, what on earth is this thing? I hear you asking. Well, this. Over the past three years, we've seen 50 fully electric vehicles on the channel. Now, despite that, today, we're seeing two features which we've never seen before. On this, the Volvo EX90, their flagship, fully electric, seven-seater, full-size SUV. Today, I'm telling you all about the tech and later driving it in my driving video. I'm Luke, welcome to this episode of The Future is Electric. Now the EX90 is built on the Volvo SPA2 fully electric platform, a platform actually shared with the Polestar 3, Volvo's sister brand, which has now gone through a bit of a divorce, but moving on from that. Now, while there is an XC90 version available, a petrol hybrid version, that variant and this full electric variant actually have little to nothing in common short of the seven seats inside because the bodywork is all different. The interior is all different. And of course, the architecture is all different. This fully electric version uses a skateboard architecture with the battery pack taking up the entire floor of this very long vehicle. And of course, big floor means big battery. We're talking a 101 kilowatt hour usable battery pack in the single motor variant. Now the twin motor gets a motor in the front and a motor in the rear with a 107 kilowatt hour usable battery pack. And this one, the one they've given me today, is their twin motor performance variant with enough horsepower to rival supercars. Well, how much horsepower, I hear you ask? Well, it's 512 horsepower, 910 newton meters of torque in this twin motor performance achieved through two permanent magnet synchronous electric motors one in the front one in the rear now of the different types of electric motors out there this is perhaps the most reliable and the one which is going to need the least amount of maintenance probably little to no maintenance over the lifetime of the vehicle now they've done something interesting in the back they have a decoupling unit which sort of unplugs that rear motor when it's not required, which improves the efficiency of the vehicle. Something I'm going to be testing in my driving video coming up next. So make sure you're subscribed for that one. All right, what on earth is this thing? I hear you asking. Well, this is a LiDAR unit and it's the first time on the channel we're seeing a production ready vehicle with such a device embedded into the car. Something that's become a bit commonplace in China, but here in Europe, we sort of catch up a bit later. So what on earth is it and why is it here? Well, a LiDAR unit is essentially a laser scanning device. It's gonna shoot lasers out in front of the car, time the reflections, and then build the geometry of the world around it. And the vehicle is going to use that for self-driving, but also for critical safety operations. Now, They've partnered with a company called Luminar for this device, and it is able to see objects up to 250 meters away in the dead of night because it's not a camera system. So it doesn't matter that it's pitch black or bright sunlight. It's using lasers to track the geometry of the world in front of it. Now, this sounds great, but I do have some bad news here because this system, while it is in a data collection mode, it is currently not being used by the car for self-driving or for the essentially safety features I talked about. This is going to be used right now for data collection and then eventually through software updates, they're gonna implement this data into those systems too. All right, let's talk battery pack. So we have a huge battery pack, as we said, 101 or 107 kilowatt hour usable battery packs and the battery chemistry NCM, nickel, cobalt, manganese. Now, the anti 
EV press has been very busy fueling the propaganda of how cobalt is being mined in the Democratic Republic of Congo causing humanitarian issues. And I agree that is wrong and that has possibly, yes, happened in the past. Now to safeguard against this, Volvo have done something extremely interesting and a first for the industry. So this car, if you come with me, has what is known as a battery passport something Volvo have partnered with a company called Circular to put together. So right here, I have a unique QR code for this very vehicle, not for this model, but for this very vehicle. I'm gonna scan it on my phone and that's gonna load up a unique web page to this vehicle, which is gonna give me information about the battery pack, such as where all the raw materials came from, the emissions, in creating this very battery pack and a lot of other important information. So just to give you an example here, we've got the nickel in this battery coming from China, the cobalt also coming from China, graphite also coming from China, and the lithium from Brazil and China. But more importantly, and this is a great, great thing here, more than 50% of the cobalt inside this battery is 100% recycled already more than a hundred it is a hundred percent synthetic graphite and more than five percent of the nickel in this battery again is recycled the lithium on the other hand zero percent recycled so that is brand new lithium from the mines but already just see how much of this brand new car has so many recycled components creating the circular economy we want to see now let me tell you about the battery cooling system. So this car has the gold standard in battery cooling technology. It is liquid cooled and it is active. So the problem with battery packs, one of the problem with battery packs is heat and the ambient hot temperature can reduce the capacity of the battery degradation. Now, when you have a cooling system, you are going to mitigate this. However, this particular system, and not all EVs have this, is an active system. What that means is even if you aren't using the car, so it's literally parked in the hot sun or in a hot garage, if it feels it's getting too hot, it's gonna turn the car on, turn on the battery cooling to maintain the ideal battery temperature of around 25 degrees Celsius. In a hot climate like ours, I like this feature a lot. All right, let me tell you about charging because we have a massive 100 plus kilowatt hour battery pack. So it's very important you figured out your charging situation. So the car has a built-in three-phase 11 kilowatt charger. And for this size battery, I highly recommend that you get a three-phase supply, whether that be at home or at your office, maybe where you're going to be charging. Now on that three phase supply 11 kilos the car can charge to full in 11 and a half hours. Now you also have DC rapid charging CCS so this is the perfect car for family road trips if you want to venture onto the European network and for that you can go to rapid charging and this has then a very very fast 250 kilowatt DC rapid charger which charges this massive battery in just 30 minutes. Now this car is also V2G ready, vehicle to grill. That means you can use the charge port in this car, not only to charge the car, but to use the car to essentially power up an entire home or even plug in and supply the grid. Now it's ready from the car side. We're not so much there from the grid side. And in fact, this feature is going to be activated on a market per market basis where conditions allow. All right, let's talk range. How much you can drive on a single charge. It is a car built for road trips with the family. So big range is gonna be important here. So your single motor base level variant 580 kilometers WLTP range. Twin motor, a bit more, 585 kilometers. And then the performance version drops down again to 580 kilometers. Now these are WLTP figures, which means it is in a test cycle mode. How does it actually perform in the real world is something I test in my real world driving test in my driving video 
linked down below coming up next on the channel. The EX90 is here, Volvo's most technologically advanced vehicle they've frankly ever built. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you prefer this one or do you prefer the plug-in hybrid XC90? Big thanks to Maverick behind the camera, Gazan Zamit for their support with today's review. But until next time, I hope I've convinced you that the future is electric. Hi guys, again, thanks so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you hit the subscribe button over here. If you're a frequent viewer and you want to help support the mission a bit more, then consider joining the channel over here. Want to see more videos like this one? Links over here as well.